I'm Phil Ross with Ross Custom Wood Furniture, and you are here in Scappoose, Oregon, and this is my shop. I have, well, potentially had some product losses because of moisture-related issues. Well, the first one was I bought some air-dried maple from a farmer. He had a tree on his property. He air-dried it, or had it cut, air-dried for a couple years and stored it in his barn. And so I thought, air-dried for a couple years, it's only one inch thick, it's probably good to go. So I glued it up, made a desk out of it, put finish on it, put legs on it. I came back the next day and it had cupped like that because it was, number one, it was near a furnace vent so it was blowing hot air on the bottom side, still cool air on the top side, but also I didn't, that was before I had a good moisture meter. And so I didn't, I had no idea what the moisture meter or reading was. So luckily I found that out before I sold it or a customer picked it up. It was just an inventory piece. But another time was this book matched uh, walnut uh, coffee table. So I had these slabs drying for about two to three years and then I took them to a kiln and I thought, okay, it's back from the kiln, it's good to go. I glued it up, was getting ready to start sanding it. And then soon after I picked up the moisture meter, the accurate one, and I'm just testing it out, you know, like you do with a new toy, like, oh, let's try it out and all these things. Well, I put it on this, which I had already glued up and the reading was off the charts. It was like over 20%. And usually you want your slabs when they come back from the kiln, eight to 12%. And so I'm thinking 20%, I gotta kiln dry it again. So I found a different place to kiln dry it. They specialize in slabs. So that's where I brought it to you. And so I had to cut it right down the middle and start all over again. So um, if I didn't know that, if I didn't have that new meter, then I would have been shipping out product that wasn't properly dried and I probably would have been out of business. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, if you're if you're worried about the cost of an accurate moisture meter and you think, well, I can get by with the $25 one, it'll be fine. You know, I don't want to spend $400. Well, think about it. The product that you were putting out there is probably worth more than $400. Not only that, but if you get a bad reputation, based off of an inferior product that didn't have proper moisture levels. Now what's costing more? The $400 moisture meter or your reputation that you can't just like go and fix right away? So in the long scheme of things, getting a quality tool that'll do the job properly is a lot better in the long run.